it's still very hard when you're in a fear situation to discern mm -hmm. what is fear and what is my intuition. And so, you know, it might take three times, it might take five times to really get the message and to really have it land in your mm -hmm. body and go, okay, I know this is a knowing. So you have that knowing what, what, where do you go next? What are you going to do to evict the guests yeah. and make so, sure they're, mm -hmm. you know, not welcome back? I just kept asking God, universe, spirit. I call this collective Gus <laughs> asking me. I love that. I've never heard that. It's amazing. Yeah. Show me the signs. Show me the path. Show me the road. And I remember talking to my awesome right hand woman and dear friend Jane. I said, go find me Hal Elrod's podcast episode where he talked about his super aggressive chemo. She found it. It was episode 211. My birthday is 211. He mentioned Chris Wark at Chris Beat Cancer. Chris, Christy, 211. So I immediately went to Chris Wark's website and purchased his program. And it's all about everything you're talking about. Having the faith, going vegan, juicing, meditating, removing toxins from your home, forgiving, all of that. And I was like, okay, this is the path and this was such a complete change of how I was eating with COVID my four three of my four food groups were sugar french fries and alcohol <laughs> and July 1st of 2022 it all changed so I got diagnosed on the 20th July 1st everything changed wow. and we are now over 600 days of no alcohol, no sugar, and no fried foods. Oh, you must feel amazing. <laughs> yeah, I feel pretty darn good. Yeah. Um, okay, so and it, it sounds like he just had the kind of holistic roadmap. So he walks people through forgiving. Like, mm -hmm. just tell us some of your realizations through that framework. Um, that really was like, oh, this is a must. Like this forgiveness tool, or mm -hmm. this moment, or this you know, realization about toxins I wasn't even aware of, mm -hmm. like just so you, so the listener, the viewer can, you know, make sure that they're not missing that. Sure. So the first thing that I had to do is forgive myself. So what decisions have I made in my life? What trauma have I been involved in that I didn't heal from? Forgive myself for whatever my part was in that mm -hmm. and accept that there are lessons and that this is a journey. So that was a big one. I, I think we all have those dark things in our closets. That was huge. Mm -hmm. And then I realized the deeper forgiveness or the forgiveness that would be harder for me was to forgive my mom. Mm -hmm. Not the birth mom that did drugs while she was pregnant. I'm so grateful for her. Forgive my adopted mom, who always made it clear that I was not good enough, who always compared our family to other families, who the first time she met my husband, she pulled me aside and said, he's too good for you, you're going to blow it. Oh. I had to forgive her. And the pathology report was dated on our 33rd anniversary. I did not see it. My meeting with the doctor to get the results that this was in fact a little bit of cancer was on the 33rd anniversary of me being told that my mom had terminal cancer. Wow. And at first I didn't know if that was a screw you or if it was a don't worry, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm here a hundred percent for you. And I got you. Mm. I chose to I chose that belief. Yeah. And so I just went through so much forgiveness and so much empathy and understanding, like looking back at her childhood, looking at everything that she went through that I knew of and totally seeing how all of these things came to play. And it wasn't my story. This was her I'm not enoughs that were getting pushed on me. Mm -hmm. And so that deep forgiveness, writing letters, and then burning them and just purging all of that. And now I can tell the story and I have such deep love and deep empathy mm -hmm. for mom. And I know she's here guiding me 
even though I'm doing it the complete different way than she did, she's here guiding me. Wow. It's beautiful. Um, so you're healing. At, sh- walk me on like the journey of like w- the tests you're getting back and, uh, you know, was the, was the breast gas gone after surgery? Uh-huh. And then and just kind of what continued after that and then how you discovered the brain guest. Sure. So in surgery, well, pre-surgery, I visualized how everything was going to go. Now, sometimes it doesn't quite go the way we want it to. And uh, so my visualization was the surgery went really well. I'm healing really well. It's a beautiful result. And there's no cancer in any of the lymph nodes. Well, one of JJ, we had named the breast guest JJ, one of JJ's little friends got out and was caught by a lymph node. And that was devastating to me because I'm like, okay, this means that she's trying. She's trying to get throughout my body. But I had another doctor say, that's what your lymph nodes are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They caught her. They caught her. So I'm like, ooh, I like that story. Uh, So I continued to do the 95% whole foods, raw vegan. I'm juicing 100 ounces a day of green juice and carrot juice, which you can see I'm still a little bit orange to this day because I'm still doing it. I just slowed my life down so much, took a back seat in my business, was only doing the things that I needed to do. Like I'm the coach, okay, I need to show up for coaching calls, but everything else. And the business, you know, it flatlined. And I'm like, that's okay. I have something more important than I'm supposed to be working on, me. So it was complete nutrition, slowing down, walking in nature every single day and just connecting to the energy, being incredibly grateful for the silliest little things. Winnie, our black lab, loves to jump up on the bed at 4 a.m. and give kisses and wake us up because she wants her breakfast and she wants to go for a walk. While that used to, I don't want to say anger me, but upset me, Now, if she does it, I just start giggling. And I'm so grateful for this beautiful being that we have the luxury of having. Mm. So incredible gratitude, being very clear on how people could support me. So I released the first blog about this and first email the day I was going into surgery. So none of my clients, none of my community knew. And I was very clear in the blog about how to support me. My language of love is cards. Here's my P.O. box, send me a card, and do not tell me about a person you know who has died of cancer. And I used to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't realize, like we're trying to connect. But I'm like, no, you are on my team. You need to cheer me on. You need to support me. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it because I'm going to start taking on all those feelings. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the most important things that I did and it didn't prevent that from coming in. I was having a a elbow issue for a long time and somebody I knew on Facebook sent me this long message about I need to be really careful because my type of cancer likes to go to the bones and her best friend shortly after she was cleared of cancer, same cancer I had, had a pain in her femur and she was dead a few months later. Oh my lord, now your elbow's breathing and you're like, okay. I'm like, no, this is from lifting up Lee Creuset pots with one hand for my coffee enemas. (laughs) Like this is not cancer, but it gets in your head. Mm -hmm. And so I had to go back into seeing this fully healed. It still flashes up every now and then, but it's not bone cancer. Mm -hmm. So I just kept going on my journey, fully believing that uh, I'm taking another step every day and I'm healing and that I see Mark and I in our 90s. And then I did a pre nuvo scan. Mm -hmm. I know you've done them too. This was my second one. And I did it because we had done a scan and there were some spots in the lungs. And I did the scan at UCLA. And they had said, come back. We can't really tell what it is. Come back in three months or go get a biopsy. And I'm like, I'm not doing any of that because even if it is something, I'm not going to do chemo. So there's really no point. So I did a pre scan. And what was interesting about the scan is the spot that was in my spine, 
which was found originally with the breast gas, that was gone. Uh, the spots in the lungs are, are there, but there's a brain guest. And so I believe that my choice to invest in my own health with this scan that's not covered by insurance saved my life. Mm -hmm. And it was just so interesting to see that some of the disease that was there before is now gone because that reassured me, okay, what I'm doing is working. Although someone asked me, how do you know if it's working if you now have the brain tumor? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just gonna believe it's working and this is just, there's another piece to the story. There's more lessons I'm supposed to learn. There's more doors that are supposed to open. I'm just trusting. But I went to the dark side also with the brain guess. You gotta feel the feels. Yeah, for a solid two days wow. in, the, in the darkness. Because at that point I was 58 and my husband has, had lost his identical twin at 59. Thank you for listening to The Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. And make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And please rate and review us so that we can grow and reach more people. Thanks so much and be well.